Good morning, everybody. I am Dina Kupfer. You're watching the Morning Blend right here on the ABC 10 Information Network. It is your Wednesday. It is March 1st, and we start things off today with wild weather across the country. The president's tweets are like the modern day version of a White House press release. I mean, the, we go by his word. He makes major announcements on Twitter. Yeah. So this is now where the conversation is when we're talking about health care reform and we're mm -hmm. talking about the ban on travel into this country. Now the narrative has switched to this. This is a mm. four alarm blaze in Uptown Oakland. You are looking live. It's at 24th and Valdez Street. Again, this happened at a building under construction. You can see how many fire trucks are pouring gallons, hundreds of gallons of water on the blaze right now, but it's just unreal to see how quickly the fire consumed that building. Just about 30 minutes ago, we saw walls and now they are gone. When I was at that blood drive earlier today, I got the chills, tears in my eyes to see how many people in this community stepped up and came together. They were still grieving them Themselves. Many of the people in line still crying. This is the passenger truck that was involved in this morning's collision with a FedEx truck. The driver of this vehicle did pass away. This is a first look now at the backyard of Ronaldo Fonseca, whose home was impacted greatly by this massive 80 to 100 foot pine tree. And this is what was left of the ground level. You can see here how massive the root system was. Breaking into our newsroom right now, Alaska Airlines has actually announced that there there was an outage affecting all of its systems early this morning. We're just following reports now that they did say their system is coming back online, but it did cause some delays. And that's exactly why we're doing the story, Megan, because for so many people, they're thinking we have had so much snow. How is it possible that the river could potentially be too low near Lake Tahoe? So what you're looking at here is actually the dam at Tahoe City. This is the road line, and this is the area where the coil would be. And every couple of feet, maybe a couple of miles, you would have another coil oil that would then respond with the battery underneath the car. In Regina, it sounds like this is really based on current events. I mean, we've heard a lot about sex trafficking, illegal immigration, of course, with the current political climate. Do you feel like you're almost in the middle of what's going on in real life right now as you're acting through the series? You've seen it on your newsfeed, pictures of your friends' brunches and babies interrupted by videos like this, videos of sirens, of crime tape, of panicked concert goers, and photos of bloodied victims. We need to be informed, but are we becoming desensitized? New information in the ghost ship fire investigation. Two men were taken into custody yesterday and they are facing criminal charges. It has been six months since 36 people died in the Oakland warehouse fire. We know that ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attacks. High security still remains around the parliament right now. You can see there that police officer helping guide the child down just really tells a story of who was at this building at the time of the attack. So I want to show you South Lake Tahoe is where this was at. So here's a picture of the lake here. We're talking about Emerald Bay specifically right off of Highway 89. So I'm going to zoom in using Google Maps and I'm going to show you where this was. Some breaking news into the Information Center right now out of San Francisco. Our ABC affiliate there is reporting that multiple people have been injured in a shooting. Construction crews are still hard at work this morning up at the Oroville Dam. They released this new video overnight of that big big project. My goodness, you can really see the scale of those concrete cinder blocks there on the bottom with those people walking by. We continue to follow breaking news this morning in New York City. A car plowed into a crowd of people in Times Square. This happened just moments ago about noon New York City time. We do have an update. New York City police say that this is not an act of terror. The president speaking this morning from the White House basically saying that he told his team to keep their heads up today. He reiterated the fact that this was a long and hard fought campaign and he said to the young people who went out and voted for the first time, you have to stay encouraged. He said we're all on the same team here. We're all Americans and he encouraged this country to move forward together and he will do everything in his power. He said to make sure this is a smooth and peaceful transition. Good evening, Dale. Well, for those who I spoke with today who live in this small community of Roseburg, they say they move here because of the beautiful backdrops you see behind me and the mostly quiet streets. But when tragedy struck 24 hours ago, this community shut down. Today, though, was a day for healing once again, and we spoke with many people who said they had to do something. They came out to support one another. A close friend of mine lost her son in the incident yesterday. 
so I'm just having a difficult time. The vulnerable community of Roseburg, Oregon coming together. There was several times yesterday where I just okay. felt like crying. Dozens lining up in the warmth of the sun to donate blood. Nothing will make the pain go away that everybody's feeling and I just want to try and do whatever I can to help. To the rest of the world, those who were killed or injured in Thursday's mass shooting at Umpqua Community College are victims. But to this small town of 22,000, they were friends, classmates, and co-workers. Well, I work for the Winston Dealer Fire District, and um, the local 2091 has lost uh, family members. I knew a few people who were there. Jonah Fallon was on his way to class when he saw the sirens. I can actually see directly what this is helping. And on this day after tragedy, this community is proving they cannot be broken, taking steps toward the healing process. Lots of prayers and keep faith. This is the story of the people of Roseburg, first brought together by their love and appreciation for the blue rivers and thick trees that make up this quaint rural town. Now bound together as they begin to pick up the pieces and heal as one. We couldn't have asked for a better community than what we have here because it hit home hard. And Dell, I have to say, when I was at that blood drive earlier today, I got the chills, tears in my eyes to see how many people in this community stepped up and came together. They were still grieving themselves. Many of the people in line still crying, but they said they wanted to be there for their fellow community members. And again, Umqua Community College will remain closed at least through Monday and flags here in Roseburg are flying at half staff. They're used to the heat fighting fires, but when these three Sacramento City firefighters hit the pavement for the California International Marathon, they will be wearing their full turnouts, which means all of that heat will be trapped in, making it a very challenging 26.2 mile run. Everybody knows what a firefighter does. Let's show them that we can uh, run a marathon in turnouts. To say the stress level of a firefighter is high would be an understatement. Heart attacks to shootings to stabbings to uh, structure fires. But with all of the high intensity situations they're put in mentally and physically, they are in great shape to run. So this will be a nice good pace. When these three hit the pavement at the CIM, they will be wearing their jackets, pants, and even helmets. These helmets are not light. That's roughly 20 pounds of gear. It's heavy. For 26.2 miles. I have done it with this CIM without the turnouts, so this will be the first time with the turnouts. Captain Mike Mora, Rich Alamo, and Chuck Godfredson are running for a good reason, to raise money for the Children's Receiving Home of Sacramento and the Fire Family Foundation. And the money's going to ra be raised for the Angels program so we can buy kids Christmas gifts this year. In years past, the CIM has been plagued with cold morning temperatures and even rain, which would make wearing all that gear even tougher. I've been practicing with uh, sweatshirts and layering up, and by mile 13, I'm ready to pull the stuff off. They do plan to pace themselves, but when the going gets tough, there will be one thing on their mind. If you start to feel overly fatigued, are you going to make some adjustments to the uniform? When it gets tough, we're going to start uh, thinking about the kids. What are we doing this for? Three firefighters trading in their boots for running shoes for a great cause. We'll get over the pain. It'll be worth it. In Sacramento, Dina Kupfer, ABC 10 News.